Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of The Osasu Show. We will be airing the concluding part of our interview with Professor Patrick Lumumba. He will be speaking to us in this concluding part about how we can implement the solutions that works for Africa, how we can, through intergenerational collaboration, continue to foster peace on the continent and to ensure that our countries unite in intra-Africa trade and development. Don't go anywhere, it promises to be a very enlightening episode. you raise the intra-Africa collaboration, which includes trade, which includes solutions, homegrown solutions to solve the issues that we face here in Africa. As a matter of fact, intra-Africa trade is one of the lowest, you know, in the world. It's far below um, intra-Asia trade, intra-Europe trade, even within the Americas. So intra-Africa trade is a huge issue here on the continent. How do you believe Africa can start to reposition themselves and their solutions how can we put sustainable measures in place to ensure that when COVID-19 <coughs> is done with we're still looking within ourselves to find solutions that work for us within the continent in answering your question I will say that Africa has always recognized the need to enhance and upscale intra-African trade so what has happened over the years is that we have not matched our intentions with our actions. As early as 1980, the then Organization of African Unity sat in Lagos, Nigeria, and came up with the Lagos Plan of Action. And if you look at the fundamentals of the Lagos Plan of Action was to improve intra-African trade, to involve women and youth a lot more and to reduce our dependency on Europe and other countries. And you are right in saying that of the continent, it is intra-African trade that is at the very lowest ebb. Of course, in the recent past, we have seen attempts at achieving a greater heights in terms of creating regional blocks within ECOWAS, for example. There are rules that now allow transportation of goods or exchange of goods at uh, certain favorable tariff and non-tariff barriers. And you see that within SADAC, you see that within Central Africa, you see that within COMESA, you see that within uh, the East African community. But yet again, there is a sense in which we put on paper things that we do not implement. And, and you will find, for example, that it is easier for Swiss companies to buy cocoa from Cote d'Ivoire, from Togo, and from Ghana, than it is for Nigeria to do the same. Mm -hmm. You'll find, for example, that Angote cement is perhaps cheaper in Ghana than it is in Nigeria, whatever the situation is. But I think COVID has done something that nothing has ever done. Perhaps this is the terrible beauty of COVID. You know, that beauty can be terrible. And, and it's terrible in the sense that it has now, uh, we have been shaken down. And I know, for example, the Africa continental free trade area was to begin operations in the month of July. That has now been postponed to the month of January 2021. And I think that there is now a commitment. I've listened to some of the virtual meetings that have taken place by the OAU Bureau and uh, rather the AU Bureau under President Mateme Lassiri Ramaphosa of South Africa, who is the current chair of the AU. And, and I begin to see the recognition by African leaders that we can no longer afford the luxury of depending on others. 
Indeed, those others on whom we depended have themselves been so devastated that even if they want it, it's not going to be easy for them to help. And, and the truth is that when transport is shut down, you then begin to realize that if you had good network, you would enhance African trade to anything between 30 and 60 percent within five years. So I wonder, intra-Africa collaboration, is that the sole solution to the issues that Africa faces? What about the issue of leadership? You've spoken quite clearly about the fight against corruption in Africa. You've spoken about the need for our leaders to take a stand, to be more proactive when it comes to um, appropriating and dispensing our resources for things that would actually bring the dividends of democracy to the average, ordinary African citizen on the street. So aside intra-Africa collaboration, what can we do as African people, from those at the helm of leadership to those of us in the private sector, those of us in the media, those of us in the entertainment industry, what do we need to do right now as Africans to take hold, to take advantage of this opportunity that lays bare in front of us? You know, my, my answer may sound a little simplistic, but I think I can't put it any better as I'm about, I'm about to put it. I, I know for a fact that leadership is at the center of many of these things. You Nigerians may remember during the presidency of my very good friend, the President Olusegun Nobasanjo, he took the view that in order to grow Nigeria, we've got to have policies that are going to lead to the emergence of millionaires and he said exactly i want to ensure that during my tenure there are going to be 50 millionaires in nigeria and and the, it is is not about giving entrepreneurs money the entrepreneurs are there and during that period if you look at the history of nigeria you'll see that is when the people who are already in business like aliko dangote started emerging people like ob jackson and many others and today aliko dangote is present, I believe, in at least 20 countries. So no president, no administration in Africa can ignore Aliko Dangote. Look at Finis Bank, look at Access Bank, look at uh, UBA Bank, and all those banks that are emanating from Nigeria. Policy, leadership in the political arena, and leadership in the private sector. In Kenya, we have a bank called Ipiti, and is now present in almost eight, more than 10 countries. You cannot ignore it. And, and you look at South Africa with, uh, in, in, in the retail sector, ShopRite and other things, you cannot ignore them. So private sector is going to be a very prime mover in this regard. But you do not want, for example, if Patrice Mosepe in South Africa is moving and is in the mining sector, every one hour flight he has to grapple with a visa. You move from South Africa you go to Zambia, you need a visa. You go to, Zam to, uh, to Angola, you need a visa. And you have 33 currencies. You can see how weak we are. And these currencies are just fiat currencies that don't achieve much. So I think, number one, at the level of politics, we need leadership. And, and I know, for example, that uh, a small country, but President Paul Kagame in the East African region has taken the view that East Africa don't need more permits if they go to, 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 to Rwanda. I think that is great. And, and, and I, President John Pombe Magufuli, is doing the same thing. Another, uh, Nana Dankwa Kufuado of Ghana is doing the same thing. I would want to see that happening, particularly the smaller countries, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Sierra Leone, the Gambia, and all these other countries. But those countries need a big brother like Nigeria in terms of policy leadership. Last year, I was very disappointed when Zaga and Nigeria closed the same border with Ghana. How? Even if you are trying to deal with rice and, 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 and smuggling of fuel, there are better ways of doing it. So leadership at the political level and relevant policy formulation is going to be very important. And private sector is also going to be very important. The so-called civil society is also going to be very important. You in the information sector, you who are journalists, in terms of articulating issues and packaging and telling our own stories, 
is going to be very important so that our story is not told by CNN and CGTN and Radio France and BBC who in any event give very jaundiced views about Africa as if Africa was a basket case. You know better that it can be done and, and, and the population must also be educated. There must be a deliberate effort to educate our people which then calls into question what, what are we teaching our people at universities. Why should the, the Lego School of Business be the school that is leading and the Nairobi School of Business and the Dar es Salaam School of Business? You will be shocked that as we speak now, the Dangote group is possibly a subject of study in MBA classes in the United States, but not in Nigeria, not in any African university. So, in a nutshell, I'm saying, let us have sound political leadership. Let us have proper, clear, facilitative policies. Let us coordinate our African business people, particularly in the private sector. Let us animate our people through civil society and through education. Let our journalists, the journalists who are also led uh, through, the, uh, lead themselves in articulating uh, economic issues and social issues. Let us also educate the people, let us improve our universities, let us invest in science, in research and development. And, and, and this is where, for example, when I talk about research and development, we are in the COVID era. And I was very happy with the Malagasy Institute of Applied Technology when they came up with something COVID organic. And African countries were not coming out to support them because we don't expect that our pharmaceutical industries are going to grow. We are waiting for Johnson and Johnson, Smith Klein and Beecham and all those countries. And, and I think I was very impressed. I was also impressed by the Louis Pasteur Institute uh, in, in Dakar, Senegal, producing testing kits. And, and these are the things that I would want to see going forward. And I think every well-meaning African knows that it can be done. And what about, lastly, our diaspora? We have over 200 and 30 million men and women living outside of the continent. They are some of our best men. I was watching the other day in Canada that there was a graduating class of 90 people in the medical school in Canada, and 46 of them were Nigerians. And they are not going to work in Nigeria. They are not going to be in Maiduguri or Port Harcourt or in Akwai Bomb. They are going to support the Canadian health system. Suppose we created an enabling environment and they came back to Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria would possibly be the medical mecca, so to speak, for East Africa, for West Africa, and, and, and all those. So the, the building blocks, and I'm saying this, by, and I'm repeating by using the word building blocks, they are there. The intention is there. Let us tap our diaspora. Let us use our nationals and let us ensure uh, that we also have certain things. Peace. This year is the year when the African Union has said that we must silence, and we must silence the guns. Because we know that when there is no peace and security, then there is no possibility of socio-economic and political progress. Right now, we have the Sahelian region. In Nigeria, you have the Boko Haram menace, which is destabilizing Chad, destabilizing Cameroon. You have problems in Mauritania. You have problems in northern Burkina Faso, in Mali. And Ambazonia, for example, we must deal with that. Because if we don't deal with, with it, it will undermine what we want to do. In southern Africa, we now have the unsettled Zimbabwe, who is the we can't wake up. What should we do with Zimbabwe? In northern Mozambique, we have another insurgency. In Bangui, in Central African Republic, in the eastern part of Congo, we still have conflict. In the Horn of Africa, in Somalia, we still have conflict. I think that there is wisdom also as we talk about doing many things. We must eliminate these conflicts to create an environment where we can undertake commerce and even improve our infrastructure and we stop producing internally displaced persons and ensure that we are doing things that are right. You saw what happened with Europe when there was a problem in the Balkans or in Kosovo. Europe went and, and, and killed it because they know that 
if there is instability in any one country in Europe, it undermines trade and commerce. Africa is blind to the realities on the ground that we talk now, for example, when you talk about Central African Republic, how many African countries or Africans even know that there is a conflict in Bangui or in Mozambique? Yes, Prof. I mean, these are viable solutions that you have preferred today. And I mean, I want to thank you deeply for them. And as we talked about, the implementation is also very important as the policy on paper. However, after implementing these solutions, by the grace of God, if we do that, how do you think the perspective of Africa will change? Because the topic is rethinking Africa in COVID-19 era, post-COVID-19 era. So after implementing the solutions that you've clearly clearly uh, preferred today, and I, which I strongly believe is viable and implementable, how do you think the Western world will then start to engage and rethink the way they look at Africa and the way they do business with Africa? Final words. You know, first of all, there is, I, I want to repeat the thing that I talked about uh, on leadership. I believe now in something that is called co-generational leadership. I believe that we must recognize three things. One, that Africa is the youngest continent. The average age of Africa is about 20. Uganda has the lowest at 16. So any policy for formulation that ignores that reality is not going to take us anywhere. We can reap the youth dividend and the dividend of the fourth industrial revolution if we recognize you must have co-generational leadership. You look at those who own Uber, for example, or own board. They are people of, of, of other these technologies. They are people in their 30s. They are the multi-billionaires. We must do that in Africa so that the dinosaurs, and I'm using the word dinosaurs as a term of art, who when they occupy office don't want to leave office, must now be told that you must ensure and make deliberate efforts to include younger people in leadership positions at all levels. The other thing is that we must involve women. I, I was uh, watching uh, uh, some kind of explanation in terms of response to COVID, that the countries that are led by women appear to be the ones that are doing better than those led by men. Look at the entire Scandinavia now. They are young, they are in their parties, and the prime ministers are men, are women, and, 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 and I think you cannot ignore 52% of your population and think you are going anywhere. If you are going to address fundamental issues such as uh, uh, child infant mortality, a crude death rates, maternal mortality, the more educated and the more exposed your women are, the safer you are. So I am of the considered view that COVID once again has given us the opportunity to realize that whatever we do must be sustainable. We are now, for example, in Africa talking about the seven pillars of Africa Agenda 263 and the 17 sustainable development goals. We go number one, elimination of poverty, hunger, talking about all those beautiful things. And I'm saying that if we are organized, right now the combined African GDP is possibly in the neighborhood of two trillion United States dollars. That is very little. That is the economy of Brazil. That is the GDP of Brazil. That is the GDP of, uh, of, uh, of Russia. It means that the, our economy, the 55 African countries combined, our economy is smaller than that of Japan or Spain. But I believe that we can enhance that so that within 10 years, we have a GDP combined of anything between 10 and 15 trillion. China has done it within a period of five years, it lifted nearly 800 million people out of poverty without the kind of resources that we have. So once again, I hold the view that once we find ourselves in that space, then we will be respected. If we begin to speak with one voice, the conceptual West will have no choice. You know, today, the reason why they, they listen to China, China did not beg to be included. They appeared in the world stage and they became the factory of the world. And before you knew it, that they, they were sitting at the dinner table and eating, and eating gluttonously, as we know. We too must 
ensure that we are at the dinner table. And what I see in this world arena is that they don't invite you to the dinner table. You actually have to get crushed. And the only reason and way to get crushed is to go there with the credentials. We tell them, we are not going to take our cocoa to Nestle. We are going to make chocolates in Africa. We are not going to take have our gold from Ghana being traded in the London Stock Exchange. It is going to be traded in Accra Stock Exchange. It is going to be traded in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We are not going to export our crude oil and then you bring us the refined oil. We are going to refine oil in Lagos and in Port Harcourt. And once we do that, we will discover that 90% we are self-sufficient. Once we do that, those who are jollof-eating people in West Africa will now not go to Pakistan. And we must also get into power generation. Right now, there is a quarrel between Ethiopia and Egypt and Sudan about the the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is going to generate 10,000 megawatts of power. We should just collaborate, because without power, you are going nowhere. And the Inga Dam in West Africa, we must now go into solar. So once we do all those things, I am telling you that the world will just respect us. We must also exercise the ghost of low self-esteem. This belief by our leaders, that even when they are sick, they can only be treated in Europe and America and progressively in Dubai, is completely misguided. We must have faith in our institution. And once you begin to have faith in your institution and faith in yourselves, the world has no choice but to embrace you and to greet you as worthy of being greeted and being accepted and being treated well. That's a brilliant place to leave it. Professor Patrick Lumumba, thank you so much for your time and thank you for all the words of wisdom that you share daily for Africans all across the continent. It truly is an inspiration to much. us to keep on doing what we are doing. And I would actually like to tell you, TOS TV Network, a media platform in which I own, finally got our broadcasting license to report news from Africa by Africans to the rest of the world. So we are taking your advice in implementing homegrown solutions. Congratulations. Thank you. That will rebrand the way we are seen by the rest of the world. So we will keep on the fight. We'll keep on pushing. And we know that with this intergenerational collaboration, things will change for the better within the continent. Thank you Thank again you. for your Fortune time. Fortune favors the ambitious and the vigilant. Aim not for the moon, aim for the galaxies. And a friend of mine once told me, don't wait for the iron to be hot, that you may hit it, hit it that it may become hot. And I think that that is exactly what you are doing and it shall be well with you. Amen. Thank you so much, Prof. DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Thank you so much for your time. Do watch us extended clips from this interview on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. You can also read news on sustainable development and current affairs across Africa. Don't forget to follow us on social media at The Osasu Show, at TOSTV Network, at Osasu Igbenadion, and at The Osasu Show Foundation on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. A joyful noise sounds like Happy something we've been life. waiting for it's a good feeling hooray the nigerian skies have reopened for business the nigerian civil aviation authority ncaa welcomes you back on board as we fly again feel confident 
NCAA is working closely with airlines, airport operators, relevant health authorities, and all stakeholders to make air transport services safe and customer focused. But we urge you to please take responsibility. Let's keep coronavirus at bay. Whether you are a passenger, service user, or service provider, wear a face mask. Maintain social distance. Observe all COVID-19 guidelines on ground and on board. NCAA says it's safe to fly again, so we're good to go. Remember, at Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, we always have your back. Fly safe. Stay safe. NCAA, ensuring safety and efficiency in air transport and navigation. DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live, Watch out for the latest update on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans.